Good morning and welcome to Terrific Tuesday. What a blessing it is to come into your hearts and come into your homes this morning. So to pray a blessing over your day and that all is well in Jesus' name. Good morning, Emma. Good morning, Buki. Good morning, Sheila, Dolores, Pamela, and Johnny. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Ruth, Louise, Shirley, Tate. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Sister Berdia, Denise, good morning, D. Roosevelt, Melanie, Rosemary, good morning. Morning, Stephanie, Sharonda. Morning, Katrina and Dominique. What's up, Lil Kalan? Libby K. Morning, Veronica, Tammy, and Carolyn. Good morning. Patsy, Dorothy, good morning everybody. The John, good morning. Morning Dorothy Bailey, good morning. Cousin Christine. Vivian, good morning, everybody. Hopefully, everybody is well. Good morning, Ray Ray. Vernon McKinney, good morning. Good morning, Brother Charles. One more minute, guys, and we'll get it kicked off. Good morning, Dawn, Lisa, good morning, Sandy, Shana Boo, Charlotte Dorsey, good morning, good morning, everybody, good morning, Aunt Jean, all right. Father God, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for allowing us this wonderful, awesome opportunity, this glorious privilege to be in your presence. We don't take it for granted. We know that it is because of your divine touch and your finger of love that allowed us to awaken. It wasn't the alarm clock. God, you are the master of our hearts, the master of our souls, the master of our lives. And we appreciate you, Lord God, for just allowing us to breathe fresh air this morning and allowing our hearts to to pump and palpate, Lord God. We appreciate you for that. And we ask him for your divine presence this morning as we worship you, as we delve into your word, asking that we would get something out of it, that we not only be a hearer, but certainly be a doer of your word. And then after which, Lord God, we'll be able to go out into the earth, replicate, duplicate, emulate who you are. In the mighty, wonderful, awesome name of Jesus Christ, we ask that you forgive us for our shortcomings and sins, for sure. And cleanse us for everything that is unholy, things that are not like you. We're asking that you will purge them out. As David said in Psalms 51, purge me with hyssop that I may be made clean. Wash me that I may be made whiter than snow. God, we thank you right now. Asking, Lord God, that you would just firmly be with us in this moment in the wonderful, awesome Mashless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Amen. I always got to talk to the Lord. Amen. Never go before your day without having a little talk with the Lord. Amen. Can I get a witness right there? All right. This song says, oh, come to the altar. Anybody needing to come to the altar of the uh, Lord this morning? I don't know about you, but I go to the um, altar quite frequently. <laughs> Amen. Quite frequently. Good morning. Amen. Melinda. Minnie Stewart. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, my friends. There you will find hope and relief. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there is no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah, God, we worship you. Anybody come to worship God this morning with me? Anybody come with the agenda of getting to know him deeper? The agenda of getting to know him higher? Oh, come on, worship God with me. Oh, what a savior. And how many know that God is wonderful? Oh, hallelujah. Somebody need to sing. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. <laughs> Bow down before him. For he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Oh, I can go on and on, but I got to give you some words this morning. Oh, come on, just bless the Lord with me. The psalmist said that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Do I have at least four or five of you, maybe 15 of you, that don't mind giving God some praise this morning with me? Oh, hallelujah. He's allowed us to awaken and shaken. He shook us this morning. And therefore, we ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Therefore, we ought to praise him and worship him and give him the adoration and the glory that is certainly due his name. Oh, bless him this morning. Amen, amen, amen. All right, guys. Let's get into some word this morning. We're still talking about, we're still talking about, um, we're in the second day of this, uh, of this devotion series, talking about how to overcome fear. And this morning, I want to bring out a brother, as I mentioned on yesterday, bring out a brother that uh, that uh, exemplified what it meant to um, to forge through, right? To forge through his um, through some of his uncertainty in the person of Abraham, right? I'm gonna go from I'm gonna start from Genesis 12 and work my way up to Genesis 22. So y'all stick with me here. Amen. Good morning, everybody. For all of those that I have not had the wonderful privilege of speaking to this morning. 
All right, let's get into this word. Of course, everybody should have a familiar understanding of who uh, Abraham uh, is and uh, because he is definitely a, um, a father of faith. Amen. The father of faith. Um, and it started his journey, his trek started in Genesis 12, the call of Abraham. Right. Just kind of give you uh, some background. Um, Abraham, his, his dad used to make make small idol gods. And, and, and Abram was right there, part of that, a part of that mess, a part of that junk. So God just decided to just pick Abraham out, right? Nothing that he, not, nothing that he was so perfect, uh, not that he had it all together, because in God's sovereignty, God would just pick you out and say, you know what? I'm going to make your name great. And I don't know about you, but that's good news already. If I don't say anything else to any of you all this morning, that is good news already that God will find you where you are and make you great. So don't try to worry about making your own name great. God has already a purpose and a plan for your life and for your name. But I want to start it out by saying in Genesis 12, this, this is how God called him. Right? He said, the Lord has said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you, encourage those who treat you with contempt. All the families on the earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife, Sariah, his nephew Lot, all of his wealth, his livestock, and all the people who had taken uh, he had taken into his household at Haran and headed for the land of Canaan. Give you some background right there. That's in Genesis chapter 12, um, verses 1 through 5, right? Just to kind of give you, lead you up to where I'm going. So this is the brother that just got called out, picked out to be picked on. And as you know the story, um, he was able to do a great, some great and awesome things. But I want to tell you, uh, I want to tell you that, uh, that, that God gave him a promise, right? So when we get to chapter 22, hurriedly get to chapter 22, you'll understand that when God tells you to do something, you got to understand that you, you, should, you should trust the promise and trust the process of God, all right? So in Genesis uh, chapter 12, verse 7, um, the Bible said, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. Keyword, descendants, right? And Abram built an altar there, altar there and dedicated to the Lord who had appeared to him, all right? He said, I will give it to your descendants. All right. So let's skip. Keep, 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 keep these key things that I'm emphasizing in mind. All right. Let's and now understand he was 75 years old at this particular time. Abram is 75 years old when God gave him a promise. And I got so many preaching points in here. Let me just tell you right here. Some of y'all been waiting a long time for God to do some great and awesome things in your life. A long time. Look how long it took Abram for God to finally speak into his life. Stop tripping. It's on the way. <laughs> I just, I just want to just insert that right there. All right, let's skip on. Let's skip on down to Genesis, um, um, ch uh, chapter fifteen. Genesis fifteen. Genesis fifteen, verses four and seven. It says, "Then the Lord said to him, No, your servant will not be your heir, for you will have a son of your own who will be your heir." Then the Lord took Abram outside and said, "Look unto him. Look up." Into the sky, count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And this ought to be your, the, the, the theme of your life right here. Verse 6 of 15, chapter 15. And Abraham believed God. Abram, I'm sorry, his name hadn't been changed yet. And Abram believed the Lord and the Lord counted him as righteous uh, because of his faith. Mm, that's good right there. Then the Lord told him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as your possession. All right. So here it is. Descendants. I'm going to give you something. I'm giving you a promise. I'm speaking some stuff into your life, Lashana. I'm speaking to some stuff into your life, Melanie. Amen. I'm speaking to some stuff and some things in your life that God will fulfill if you trust the promise and trust the process. All right. Let's skip over to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 through 8. All right. When Abram was 99, <laughs> 75, here it is now, he's 99 years old. The Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai. Oh, I love that. El Shaddai, that means God is almighty. 
Serve me faithfully. Serve me faithfully, Georgia Grayson. Serve me faithfully, Dolores Williams. Serve me faithfully, Jamie Cunningham. Serve me faithfully, James and Catherine Tankson. Serve me faithfully, Lula Harris. Watch this. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. Verse two, I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. God always, I'm telling you, he always affirms and confirms his word. You don't have to worry. Just trust the process. Amen. Somebody need to pin this. Trust the promise. Trust the process. Trust the promise and trust the process. All right. Um, in verse three, he said at this, at what, at what God said, at the, at what God promised him, right? At this, Abram fell face down on the ground. Then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, because you believe me, he says, I'm changing your name. Oh my gosh. Hallelujah. How many know that he will change your name? And as Sister Lisa sings a song, she said, the song said, he knows my name. Once he changes my name, he knows that name. He calls me out by my name. Watch this. There, there are some cantankerous individuals in your life that, still, that are still calling you by your past name. You need to tell them right now, look, I, I've got a new name. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm telling you right now that, that I'm not the same old person. I may still, I may still, you may still call me Thurman, but I'm not, th I'm not Thurman, the, the person that used to be out in the street. I'm not that type of Thurman. I'm not that Thurman anymore. I'm not that old man. I am made brand new. Oh, hallelujah. Right? this. He said he fell at his face, fell on his face. He said, I'm going to make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I'm changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham. Abraham, for you will be the father of many, the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Here it is again. I've, how many times have we heard the sentence? Your descendants will become many nations and kings will be among them. Oh my gosh. Oh, hallelujah. God has some kingship in you, brother. There is some kingship in you, uh, some queenship in you, sister. Watch this, verse 7 of chapter 17. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants. How many times God got to tell you that he's going to bless you? How many times, Sister, uh, Sister Emma, that, that God has to tell you that he's going to work this thing out? How many times? How many times that he's got to tell you that he's going to make a way out of no way? Peaches and Sister Grier and Tanya Fuller. And Stephanie Brown and Veronica Hodges, how many times does he have to tell you that what he says will be fulfilled in your life? But I'm getting to where I'm getting, I'm getting ready to go on where I'm going. All right. All right. He says, I will confirm my covenant with you and your sinners after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your, here it is again, descendants after you. All right. Verse eight. I've got to give you one more of chapter 17. And I will give the entire land of Canaan where you not live as a foreigner to you and your descendants. It will be your possession forever and I will be your God. I want to emphasize descendants because, because you got to understand something. If you just jump, now I want to jump to chapter 21. 21. All right. So, so now here it is. Um, the Lord, I love the... The Bible, the, the Bible, God is a progressive God. He keeps his promises. Now you look at chap, chapter 21, verse one, he says, the Lord kept his word. <laughs> hey man, this is a blessing you already. Look, I, I believe I'm speaking to at least 65 of you guys. I believe that I am speaking to at least a couple of you guys that are in the middle of, of trying to uh, figure out, God, are you going to keep your promise? God, are you going to bless me with the, the desire that I have burning in my heart? The Bible said, if you delight yourself in him, he will give you the desire of your heart, right? Look at verse one of chapter 21. The Lord kept his word and did for Sarah exactly what he had promised. She became pregnant. She, be she gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. This happened at just the time God said it would. And Abraham named their son Isaac. Eight days after Isaac was born, Abram circumcised him as God had commanded. Now here it is. Abram was 100 years old when Isaac was born. 
75 years old when God told him to leave his leave his his um leave his family, leave all of his familiar territory. 75 years old. He told him to walk away from everything that he ever known. 75 years old when God told him to go to your spot of obedience. Hey Amen. I'm speaking to somebody this morning. 75 years old when God says, hey, I'm going to bless you immensely. I'm going to bless your descendants. 75 years old. Now, here's the catch. What do you do? Verse 20, uh, chapter 22. What do you do? I'm about to holler at you now. When what God promised you and he grants unto you, you've been praying about this thing. And then all of a sudden, he tells you to walk. He tells you to sacrifice the thing that you love. Oh, we about to get into the crux of it for the next 10 minutes. We about to get into the crux of this message. We about to get into the crux of this devotion. Because there are many of us that are holding on to false promises. Oh, speak, Lord. There are many of us that are holding on to false hope. And, and we don't want to let it go for whatever reason. We're holding on. We're holding on thinking that it's going to manifest in something that I think is going to work out. But did not tell you you got to trust the promise and trust the process. Chapter 22 I believe that that about 15, 20 of you guys are right here. Sometime later in chapter 22, verse 1, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, I'm about to role play. Abraham, God called. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. You, God, God, you've given me everything that I pray for. You've given me the son that, that, I, um, that I pray for. You, you've given me a descendant. You touched my, you touched my wife's womb. Um, she was unable to bear children. You touched her, and here it is. I, I have my promise. <laughs> I went through the process. I have what I've been praying for. I got it. Lord God, look at the lad of that boy. Look at, look at my boy. Look at my boy. Look at him. Look at him. I'm here, Lord. All right, Abraham. I see you. I see you. Now, I want you to do something. Verse two, I want you to do something. I want you to take your son, your, your, your only son. Yes, Isaac, Isaac. Now, you got to go back. You got to understand Ishmael was a part of the process, too. But I'm talking about the promise that God gave, that promise that God gave through Sarah, not through Hagar. Go read the, go, go back and read it. Take your son, your only son. Yes, Isaac, specifically Isaac, not Ishmael. Isaac. See, God, when God is specific, he doesn't leave it out there. Just hang for you to figure it out. OK. All right. Ruby, I'm calling your name. All right. Jan Pearson, you. All right. Tanzala, your name. Sharona Giles, your name. He said, take your son. Yes, Isaac, whom you love so much. And go to the land of Moriah. And I want you to do something. I want you to do something, uh, Abraham. I want you to go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of these, on one of the mountains that I'm going to show you. Now, I'm, I'm just going to be just quite honest with you that. Now, Abraham was a man. As, as much as we see him as a man of faith, I've got to believe that there was some, some fear somewhere in there. I, I've got to... I, just me. I'm just talking about from a, from my. This is this is me speaking, right? I, I wasn't there, but I'm just trying to reconstruct. I'm just trying to reconstruct this moment, because because after you pray for something, and after you've been um been on your face for some stuff, been praying, asking God to give you some stuff, and God finally gave it to you, and then all of a sudden He says, "I, I need you to walk away from it. I need you to sacrifice it." Oh, could could you do it, Stephanie Brown? Could you do it? Melanie, could you do that? Come on, Stephen Thomas, could, could you have done that? If God promised you something, that job that you've been, uh, been, been waiting on, you went to school, you, you matriculated, right? All the way through college, you matriculated, right? You was able to get your, your, your bachelor's degree. You was able to go get your master's and your doctorate and your PhD. And all of a sudden God said, okay, yeah, it's good that you got that, but I want you to, I want you to pivot and go this way. <sighs> Jesus Christ, oh my Lord. I want you to sacrifice and go this direction. 
I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. I really don't, but I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit. But watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Hallelujah. Verse three. The very next morning. So, so, so I got, I've got to understand in my mind that that when a when God told Abraham, oh bless the Lord, when God told Abraham to do that on yesterday, I'm, I'm, I'm certain in my mind that there was some stuff going on. Oh God, wait a minute. You promised me this boy. You promised me that I was going to have what descendants, and that many nations will come from me. All right. The next morning, I may go over because this is good. The next morning, Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey, took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for, for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day of the journey. Now, now here it is. I, I, this is just a preacher in me. I think I think thoroughly through the the passage, and I try to exegete it properly. Okay, you I had three days. This it says on the third day of the journey, he's got three days to ponder about what's getting ready to happen. He's got three days to ponder and process about killing his own son. Mm, Jesus Christ! Oh my gosh! Can you see the can you see the the heightened tension here? Well, watch this. Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He saw he saw the place where he had to sacrifice his only child. Not his only child, but the one that he that God promised that will his descendants would come through. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. Mm. Watch this. This is key. This is Abraham. This is faith kicking in now. This is faith kicking in. He said, watch this. We will worship there. Here it is. And some of y'all may have missed this. All your Bible study teacher, pastor, preacher, teachers. Y'all may have missed this, but I saw something. He said, we will worship there. And then we will come right back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can you see faith starting to rise up in this brother? Can you see? Can you see the promise speaking up? Now, in Abraham, and I know that some of you guys are about to make it applicable to your life. I know that some of you guys are in the middle of this process right now that are saying, God, wait a minute. You, you're telling me to sacrifice everything I've ever known. You're telling me to leave and walk away from everything I've ever known. But God, watch this. Faith got to start kicking in. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And I'm going to call that thing out. God, I'm going to call those things, though they be not as if they already were. Amen. Life and death, Proverbs 18, 21. Somebody pin it. Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death lies within the power of your tongue. The Bible says Abraham spoke up. He said, look, servants, y'all stay back here. Y'all stay right here. Me and my son, we're going to go up to where God told us to go. We're going to get up there. Now faith is overcoming fear. Oh, hallelujah. Faith is overcoming the situation. Faith is overcoming your own intellect. Faith is overcoming your degrees. Faith is overcoming everything that you thought was true in your own mind. He says, watch this. The boy and I, we're going to travel a little bit further. We're going to worship there. And then we will come right back. Look, Abram in his mind had to have understood every time that God said descendants. <laughs> Oh, bless the Lord this morning. Every time that God said descendants, look, he is in his mind saying, God, I don't know how in the world you're going to work this thing out. But I do know, I do know, oh, hallelujah, that you told me. <laughs> you already changed my name and I'm not going back to earth. I'm not going back to where my daddy is. I'm not going back to worshiping idol gods. You have, I've already seen you work stuff out of my life. And I just firmly believe by faith that this situation, I believe that you're going to work it out too. However you're going to do it. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Watch this. And I'm almost done. So verse six. So Abram placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulder. While he himself carried the fire and the knife. And as the two of them walked together, Isaac, his son, turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire in the wood, the boy said, but, but where is, is the sheep for the burnt offering? Now, I, I want to tell you something. Verse 6 is key. Verse 6 is, is a picture of, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulder. 
the wood. And did not our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ carry some wood? Did not, did not he carry a cross for to, to, to be the ultimate sacrifice? Can you see, can you see Jesus Christ in this moment right now? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, Jesus, uh, uh, Abraham said, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We, we have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep? Here it is right here. Verse 8 ought to be the theme of your life right here too. God will provide. Amen. God will provide. And I want to tell you, Tammy Love, that, that God is going to provide. Amen. I, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, Jamie, that, that God will provide. Elaine Davis, God will provide. God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son. Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. And so verse nine, when they arrived at the place where God had told them to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment, oh my Lord Jesus. See, see, woo. at that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham. And Abraham was, was fully convinced that God, this is what you want me to do. Because I love you, because I trust you, I'm going to do it. And the Bible specifically said that the angel just didn't call him one time because he was, he was all in at this moment. God, I know you're going to make a way. God, I'm getting ready to walk off the job. I, I know you're going to wake up, make a way. God, I know, I know that you are, are telling me to walk away from some things. Abraham, he called him twice. He had to get the brother's attention because he was fully vested in what God told him to do. Called his name twice. Then he looked. He said, yes, yes, Lord, I, here I am. Here I am. He says, don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Don't hurt him in any way. For now I know, oh my Lord, that you truly fear me. That you truly respect me. That you truly are a man that trust the process, that you truly are a man that fully believe the promise that I have in your life. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram. <laughs> Look, can I tell you something? I know I'm over time, but I got to speak what God has told me to speak to you on this early morning devotion. You would never Catherine and James Tankson, Minnie Stewart, and Georgia Grayson, and Lisa Dorsey, and Margaret Steele, you will never experience what Abraham experienced until you walk and go to the spot of obedience. That ram was always there on top of the mountain. Mm. He was always there. Abraham Name the place Jehovah Jireh. Mm. The Lord provides. And I want to I wanna leave you on that. I want to leave you with that. I want to leave you with that. Stop trying to figure it out. Trust God's promise. Trust the process. Trust God's promise. And trust the process. Mm. Your, your, your ram is in the bush. But you'll never know it until you go to the mountain where God is calling you to. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord God, for your word. You're teaching us how. You have taught us how to walk away from the things that we love and hold dear. And you showed us a process of how to do it. Not on our own whim. Not on our feelings and our emotions. But based off the promise. That you have planted firmly deeply. Into our hearts. And I believe Lord God that this is a word for. Maybe about 5, 10, maybe 60 people today. That are in the middle of trying to figure out. What to do. And I pray, oh God, that you would just firmly saturate your presence as they go back and review it and as others will see it. St. Paul, my church family, your blessings have always been and forever will be 
and the spot of obedience. God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. And we bless and lift your name up on high for being a God that speaks to us through others. And I'm just grateful for you allow me, Lord God, to just pull back and to be your voice in the heart of so many. Bless, I do pray, in the mighty, awesome, matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, guys. Love you. Have a wonderful, blessed day.